Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and Apple released iOS 16.1 beta five to developers and soon to public beta testers. This is probably the last beta and hopefully we'll see the release candidate or RC soon. Now this came in at 594.7 megabytes. That's on my iPhone 14 pro max and was about five to 650 megabytes on all the devices here, the iPhone 11, eight plus iPad pro as well. And along with this, Apple also released iPad OS 16 beta 12 or iPad OS 16.1 beta six. It's a little bit confusing still Mac OS 13 Ventura beta 11 TV OS 16.1 beta five HomePod OS 16.1 beta five, but no watch OS 9.1 beta five just yet, probably tomorrow. Like they did last week. Now let's take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings then down to general, then about you'll see the version of 16.1. If we tap on 16.1, we can see the build number of two zero B five zero seven two B. This is a little unusual if it is the last beta as typically we'll have an a at the end of the build number as we get closer to the release candidate. So we could see an iOS 16.1 beta six, but we'll talk more about that toward the end of the video. As far as changes and updates, well, the first thing is we do have a modem update. Many people were complaining of problems with cellular connectivity on beta four. So we could see some improvements there on the iPhone 14 series. We have an update from 1.13.01 to 1.13.02. The build number of the modem update can change depending on devices. So just keep that in mind. You may see a different version, but it does appear we have an update for that. As far as 5g in India, as they're rolling that across the different areas in the country, Apple has not supported that yet. It's not updated in beta five. As far as I'm aware so far, it doesn't seem to be enabled. And most people are saying that this will be enabled in December, according to recent sources. So it looks like Apple may roll this out toward the end of the year as they learn the different bands and frequencies needed for the different carriers in India. So those of you that were asking, unfortunately, it's not rolling out just yet. As far as new features and changes and updates, well, after the initial install of iOS 16.1 beta five, the phone restarted and I was greeted with the hello screen. I didn't see it on all the devices, but just my 14 pro max for some reason. And I had to select different settings for sharing analytics. So you may or may not see that. Like I said, I didn't see it on any other device, just this one. So that's a little bit odd. Now there is a message if you're working out with low power mode on. Now I wasn't able to get this to trigger. It probably requires a longer workout, but if you're working out with low power mode and in the fitness app, you'll see, I just did a quick walk to see if I could get this to trigger with low power mode on, on my watch. Then I tried it again with low power mode on, on the phone. And what it will tell you is this workout was recorded in low power mode with fewer GPS and heart rate readings. Some metrics may be unavailable. So that should pop up if you actually record a workout in low power mode. Of course, I would recommend against that as you want all of the data possible. And thanks to Steve Mosier for helping me out finding that. Also with beta four, we had tons of mentions of satellite connectivity that's so far not showing up anywhere in cellular. I couldn't find it. If I go into emergency SOS, there's no mention of it. There should be a demo mode of trying that out. Many of the graphics were found in iOS 16.1 beta four, as you can see here on Twitter from Steve Mosier. And unfortunately it's just not showing up yet. So hopefully we'll see that very soon and we can test that out. There's no additional changes that have been found. Just a couple little things in the code, nothing major, but that's really it. Mostly to do with the health and fitness app, just some wording changes there. And then a warning with low power mode. Also, one thing I mentioned quite some time ago, but I wasn't able to show as I didn't hit the limit is if you create lock screens, there's actually a limit for this. I'd seen this in the code before, but was unable to duplicate it as I tried 50 different lock screens and it didn't trigger. It actually takes 200 lock screens. So if you've created 200 lock screens, it will actually trigger and say, you need to delete one as you can no longer create any more. You've created enough of them. So that's something Apple has added and specifically it triggers at 200 lock screens. So if you've created that many, you should probably delete some as it's very difficult to find that many as you're scrolling through. I'm surprised the limits, not less. Also, one thing I wanted to mention is there's no live activities. Still they've removed the options here under TV. So if we go down to TV here, live activities is no longer there. It wasn't there in the previous beta and it's still not back. So if you're in the TV app, maybe watching live sports, the option just isn't there. So we'll wait for it to load, go to watch now again, wait for it to load. 
go down to live sports here. And if we go into a live game, we don't have the option to select to watch this with live activities. So hopefully they bring this back with the release candidate or the last beta. So we're really waiting for that. That's something that should be coming with iOS 16.1. Now this past week, Apple released firmware updates for AirPods. It's a beta firmware. That's why I didn't cover it in a separate video as nothing really significant was found, but they updated them to version 5B 5040C. I updated the AirPods Pro and you need to be a developer in order to do that. So it's not simple to update. You have to go into your settings. You have to connect your phone to Xcode. Then you can enable the developer settings, which I have here, which disappeared. So I'll have to re-enable them since I installed this beta. Then you can enable the developer settings, then enable the beta for your AirPods. Then you can install the update. It's a little bit tricky to do. Took me a while. And if we go into AirPods, you'll see that these are updated as well. So you'll see 5B40C for the version. So they've been updated. We'll know more about whether or not connectivity and more is fixed once they release the final update. They also updated MagSafe. So we have MagSafe updates. These are difficult to really know how to update. You just use them and they eventually update. So the version is 10M1821, or in your settings, you'll see it as version 255.0.0.0. So it's not something that's easy to update. Let's see if mine's updated. And it is, as I go into my MagSafe charger, it looks like it updated already. So firmware version 255.0.0.0. Now I wanted to mention a few things they've fixed this time around. People are reporting that their VPNs are working properly again, whether that's NordVPN or others. So that's a good sign. And also the music animation seems even smoother than it was with beta four. So if I play music, we go to the lock screen here, tap on the album art, it's very smooth going back and forth. It seems like it's even smoother than it was before, as you can see here. I think it looks great. So that's a good sign. Things are refined and definitely better as far as that goes. One thing that's still a problem though, is the startup sound works properly, but when you turn off the phone, it doesn't seem to work properly. So I'll turn it off on this phone here with the 14 pro. We'll just turn it off. We'll see if it works. And I feel haptic feedback but it just shuts off and nothing more. The boot up sound is there, but the shutdown sound is not there for some reason. So it doesn't seem to work properly. Also, there's no mention of whether or not Apple's fixed the issue with the display flickering. This is a constant problem for some people. In fact, some people have said they have it on other phones as well in darker areas of the phone. So when the darkness or display brightness is turned down, the dark areas of the phone actually will flicker. Thankfully, I haven't seen this, but quite a few people have reported this. Also, that new AirPods update may take care of the issue where AirPods Pro 2 were giving a false message of replacing the battery since they'd gone bad. That's something that was sort of an error and a bug. Hopefully it's fixed with this as well, but we just don't know as Apple hasn't said. As far as the release notes with this one, let's go into the feedback app. Give it a moment. We'll go into the inbox and the beta five release notes. Most of these are just known issues for matter since matter launched again, similar issues as what we had with beta four, and we still have the memory allocation error that's still there. So this hasn't really changed. There's not much here as far as anything different. So still a few bugs they need to work on. You'll see four known issues here. And additionally, that memory allocation issue with as another bug. So five known issues, nothing mentioned is resolved with beta five. However, this is a refinement update. They're fixing issues as they get ready for the final release. So hopefully we'll see much better performance and just battery life improvements and more. As far as overall performance, I did notice when installing the update, it was very warm. It's much cooler now, and I don't really notice an issue. So it seems to have cooled down quite a bit. So that's good performance wise performance seems to be quite good. In fact, loading Minecraft on an eight plus, if I go into that, we'll see how it resumes here. We'll give it just a moment and it seemed to be pretty good. Frame rate was good, but I did notice some lag in different apps on the 14 pro max. So as we're waiting for that, we'll hit resume. Oh, there we go. We're in and it lagged for just a second. Now it's working okay. And then it lagged again. So actually this isn't working as good as I thought it worked fine earlier on, but after resuming it sort of lagged a little bit. So maybe they have some issues with that memory allocation and more, and hopefully that will be resolved 
with the final update. Like I said, I mentioned there were, was lag before. If I go into Fitness Plus and I scrolled, I had severe lag. You'll see some of it there. It's very laggy for me for some reason. That could be because it's loading, but it was already loaded. And I've seen this throughout with Beta 5. So again, it may still require some work. As far as benchmarks, I did run those with Geekbench 5 just to see if we have consistency. It doesn't really tell you the overall performance of everything and I ran it just once so it's probably going to improve but I ran it right after installing when it was a little bit warm you'll see I had 1872 for single core 5294 for multi-core that's not great right after running it but it did go down a little bit I'll run it again later you'll see I ran it before and then it improved afterwards so typically this improves we'll give it a few days and then check on it with the follow-up video this weekend now as far as battery life let's go into settings we'll go down to battery and of course this is a new device so the capacity is still 100 percent and over the last 10 days, yesterday I didn't use it a whole lot, but I downloaded a lot using the hotspot. So this is going to use a lot of power. So I only had three hours and 14 minutes of screen on time with about almost 75, 70% usage, which isn't great. The day before though was much better. Three hours and 45 minutes of screen on time with under 50% usage. So I think battery will improve over time. Hopefully it does for the always on display. I also notice when I turn the screen off, the display seems much darker here. So if we close out of music, let's just close that so we can go back to the lock screen. You'll see it's much darker this time around for me and it doesn't show the wallpaper as easily. So it just depends what wallpaper you have set. So if I change it to a different one again on this one, if we darken the screen, it's not as dark as the other one, but it really depends on the background. So in general, it seems to be working a little bit better, very dark on this particular wallpaper, which hopefully will save some power. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 16.1 beta five, absolutely. If you're on beta four or any of the other iOS 16.1 betas, test it out, report and feedback if you have issues. However, since iOS 16.0.3 released yesterday, I would stay on the stable version if you're wondering if you're going to have any bugs or anything else betas, I would only recommend for people that know what they're getting into and have backups made. Otherwise stay on the public release. We should have iOS 16.1 fairly soon. As far as iOS 16.1, as far as beta five, I would expect beta six, maybe next Tuesday or the release candidate. We've had some information saying that iPad OS 16 would be at the end of the month. So it makes sense that we would have iOS 16.1 release candidate, maybe on the 18th or sometime around then with a final release in the last week of October. Then we could see iPad OS 16 and Mac OS 13 Ventura in that last week as well. All of those things seem to make sense. So hopefully we'll see that now, as far as iPad OS 16 beta 12, at this point, we're just waiting for a final release. So everything seems to be the same, no real differences that I've noticed and stage manager seems to work okay, but we're really waiting for the external displayer support to come back. So maybe with 16.1, 16.2 on iPad, we'll see that. As far as anything else, well, that's pretty much it with iOS 16.1. We're waiting for the final version and then it to release to the public to see what else they've actually fixed as far as resolved security issues and more. Now, one thing I did want to share that I don't typically share every time is this wallpaper. This one is by HK three T O N. And of course I'll link it in the description, but it's just a mod of an iPhone 14 pro wallpaper. I really like it. And like I said, I link those in the description, but I wanted to share who the creators are since I use many of these wallpapers. If you found anything else though, in 16.1 beta five, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.